I wonder if Dr. Romano is still here. Hi, Dr. Romano. I want to tell you, guess what Santa Claus brought me for Christmas this year? Dr. Romano? Is that you? Hey, Dr. Romano, do you want to hear what Santa brought me for Christmas Actually, this year? I don't, but I would like you to come over here so we can do a nice video clip for the Facebook study group. Well, he brought me a 2019 Dad Destroyer and a 2019 Mad Destroyer, Dr. Romano. Well, that's Romano. good. The 2019 book is actually my best book so far. Um, what I want to do in this video clip is to show you a really challenging problem. We're going to take this iodide and we're going to treat it with sodamid. And we're going to heat it up, and I want to know the product. Well, first of all, let's name the reactant. That's a good question. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start from here and call this one. This is two, and this is three. And I would get one iota, two, two dimethyl propane. Or, or I can use the common name neopental iodide. Be very careful of that word neopental. Notice it looks like you have a T-butyl group, but then there's a CH2 group after it, and that's the neopental group. So we take a neopental iodide as the common name. So that's A, and that's pretty straightforward. Now, the reaction mechanism. This particular problem, every student got wrong on the study group. First of all, a lot of kids thought it could be an SN2, where you would simply knock out the iodine and put in an NH2 group. And the logic is, well, it's a primary halide. It's a primary halide, and yes, they love to do SN2, but if you remember, the SN2 is a backside attack. There's no way you're going to be able to do a backside attack with this monster group in front of you. If you remember, whenever there's a backside attack, we're attacking the antibonding orbital. There's no way we can get access to that antibonding orbital because of steric hindrance. So that means that instead of entertaining the possibility of the NH2 acting as a nucleophile, could it act as a base? And that's where the key is. And NH2 minus is very strong, even strong enough to remove an H off a methyl group. So as you can see in my first step, I removed an H off of the methyl group, and this carbon I now labeled for you so no one gets lost in red. This carbon here is now a carbanion. And now I'm able to do an intramolecular SN2. Notice I can come across here, I can eliminate the iodide, and I can form the product and the product was formed in pretty good yield, this product being a cyclopropane. To name it, this is position 1. This would be a 1,1 dimethyl cyclopropane. And then, of course, our leaving group is the highly stabilized iodine ion. I hope that helps. That's a hard problem. But I want you to make sure you focus on the concepts. Naming the question, that was pretty good. Understanding the neopental group, you want to make sure you're always cognizant of the fact that neopental is a common name and it does appear in the literature. And especially make sure you understand how I move these arrows. The arrow movements are possible. Normally, if something is too sterically hindered, there's no SN2. But always check to see if there's a possibility, instead of doing an SN2, to do an acid-base reaction. And if that's possible, then maybe we can set up some kind of internal reaction like we just saw um, in this attack. All right, I hope this helps on a problem that the weakest student will call overkill. But for those of you out there that are gunning for a 30, like many of my students, we get a lot of 30s in my group in this orgo section. Um, make sure you put this question in and understand the mechanics. All right. Thank you, you, Dr. Ma. That was a tough problem. Well, that's good. Bye-bye. Made me hungry. Can I bring you a stack, Dr. Romano? Good day to you, sir.